Ireland's brief history. Ireland is a package of spectacular scenery, diverse culture, and warm hospitality. And all of these came from a rich history. Let me take you to time travel and see Ireland from 10,000 years ago. Welcome to All About Ireland series. This is the Lifehack Lion, the channel that gives you amazing life hacks and interesting facts. Make sure to watch this video till the end because you don't want to miss how Ireland became a beautiful country as it is now. Ancient Ireland Historians estimate that Ireland was first settled by humans about 10,000 years ago. Around 4,000 BC, it is estimated that the first farmers arrived in Ireland. The Stone Age farmers kept sheep, pigs, and cattle and raised crops. They lived in huts with wooden frames covered with turfs and thatched with rushes. The farmers made pottery and tools of stone, bone, and antler. Around 300 BC, Iron Age warriors known as the Celts came to Ireland. They brought iron tools and weapons and built stone forts across Ireland. Many famous Irish myths stem from stories about Celtic warriors. The current first official language of the Republic of Ireland, Irish or Gaelic, stems from the Celtic language. Early Christian Ireland Following the arrival of St. Patrick and other Christian missionaries in the early to mid-5th century, Christianity took over the indigenous pagan religion by the year 600 AD. Many monasteries were founded across Ireland, and soon the Irish sent missionaries to other parts of Europe. Irish Christian scholars excelled in the study of Latin, Greek, and Christian theology in monasteries throughout Ireland. One of the greatest arts was making decorated books called Manuscript Illumination, and the most famous work is the Book of Kells. The art of metalworking and sculpture also flourished and produced such treasures as the ornate jewelry and the many carved stone crosses that can still be seen across the country. However, this golden age ended with the Viking raids. The Viking Era At the end of the 8th century and during the 9th century, Vikings, from where we now call Scandinavia, began to invade and then gradually settle into and mix with Irish society. As they were also traders and craftsmen, the Vikings founded Dublin, Ireland's capital city, and the towns of Wexford, Cork, and Limerick. They also gave Ireland its name, a combination of the Gaelic word iron and the Viking word land. The Vikings settled down, intermarried with the Irish, and accepted Christianity. However, following the defeat of the Vikings by Brian Boru, the High King of Ireland, at Clontarf in 1014, Viking influence faded. English Invasion The 12th century saw the arrival of the Normans. The Normans built walled towns, castles, and churches, and increased agriculture and commerce in Ireland. Then, Ireland's 800-year struggle with England begins. In the 1600s, the Ulster Plantation occurred in which Irish land was taken from Irish landowners and given to English families. From this period on, the sectarian conflict became a common theme in Irish history. The 17th century was a bloody one in Ireland when Oliver Cromwell arrived. His intended to eradicate the Irish problem once and for all and considered his quest as the work of God. Together with his army, Cromwell slaughtered and murdered Irish Catholics, burnt their houses, and unplanted their crops. It culminated the imposition of the harsh regime of penal laws set about disempowering Catholics. These laws denied Catholics the right to take leases or own land above a certain value, outlawing Catholic clergy forbidding higher education and entry to the professions, and imposing oaths of conformity to the state church, the Church of Ireland. During the 18th century, strict enforcement of the penal laws eased by 1778. Catholics held only about 5% of the land in Ireland. Union with Great Britain 
In 1782, a parliamentary faction led by Henry Grattan successfully agitated for a more favorable trading relationship with England and greater legislative independence for the Parliament of Ireland. However, London still controlled much of what occurred in Ireland. Inspired by the French Revolution, in 1791, an organization called the United Irishmen was formed with the idea of bringing Irish people of all religions together to reform and reduce Britain's power in Ireland. Its leader was a young Dublin Protestant called Theobald Wolfe Tone. The United Irishmen were the inspiration for the armed rebellion of 1798. Despite attempts at the help from the French, the rebellion failed, and in 1801, the Act of Union was passed uniting Ireland politically with Britain. The Great Famine One of Ireland's greatest leaders, Daniel O'Connell, known as the Great Liberator, aimed to cancel the Act of Union and re-establish an Irish parliament. However, this was a much bigger task and O'Connell's approach of nonviolence was not supported by all. Worse, such political issues were overshadowed by the worst disaster and tragedy in Irish history, the Great Famine. More than one million Irish died and more than one million immigrated due to the failure of their main crop, the potato. The famine lasted from 1845 to 1852 and affected a lot of Europe. Although the Irish had cattle and sheep, they had to sell these due to the high rents on their stolen land that the English demanded. If they could not pay the exuberant rent, they were evicted from their houses and land. The Irish even risked their lives traveling on coffin ships to America where they settled on the East Coast. There are tales of roads strewn with dead Irish men, women, and children, with green around their mouths in a desperate attempt to satisfy their hunger by eating grass. Home Rule There was a little effective challenge to Britain's control of Ireland until the efforts of Charles Stuart Parnell. While Parnell did not achieve home rule or self-government, he earned the title of the Uncrowned King of Ireland. In Ulster and the north of Ireland, the Protestants were concerned about the prospect of home rule being granted as they would be a minority in an independent Ireland with a Catholic majority. Hence, they favored the union with Britain led by Sir Edward Carson. A home rule bill was passed into law in 1914, but on the same day, it was suspended due to World War I. Many Irish nationalists believe that home rule would be granted after the war if they supported the British war effort. However, a minority of nationalists did not trust the British government, leading to one of the most pivotal events in Irish history, the Easter Rising. Easter Rising In 1916, two groups of armed rebels the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army seized key locations in Dublin. Outside the General Post Office in Dublin City Centre, Patrick Pearce, the leader of the Irish Volunteers, read the Proclamation of the Republic, which declared an Irish Republic independent of Britain. Then, battles ensued with casualties on both sides and among the civilian population. The public was opposed to the rising, and so the British administration responded by executing many of the leaders and participants. All seven signatories to the proclamation were executed, including Pierce and Connolly, the leader of the Irish Citizen Army. War of Independence The Irish Republican Army, the army of the newly declared Irish Republic, waged a guerrilla war against British forces from 1919 to 1921. In December 1921, a treaty was signed by the Irish and British authorities. While a clear level of independence was finally granted to Ireland, the contents of the treaty were to split Irish public and political opinion. One of the sources of the division was that Ireland was to be divided into Northern Ireland with six counties and the Irish Free State with 26 counties. 
Such a division of opinion in Ireland caused a civil war between pro and anti treaty forces. The consequences of the civil war can be seen to this day, where the two largest political parties in Ireland have their roots in the opposing sides of the civil war the Fine Gael and the Fine Fall. Northern Ireland Under the same Government of Ireland Act of 1920 that created the Irish Free State, the Parliament of Northern Ireland was created. The Parliament consisted of a majority of Protestants and while decades were stable, it came to an end in the late 1960s due to systematic discrimination against Catholics. In 1968, the Catholic civil rights marches began in Northern Ireland, which led to violent reactions from some Protestant loyalists and the police force. The period known as the Troubles followed when nationalist Republican and loyalist unionist groups clashed. The British troops were sent to Derry and Belfast to maintain order and to protect the Catholic minority. However, the army soon came to be seen as a tool of the Protestant majority, and this was reinforced by the Bloody Sunday in 1972, when British forces opened fire on a Catholic civil rights march in Derry, killing 13 people. An escalation of paramilitary violence followed, with many atrocities committed by both sides. The period of the Troubles is generally agreed to have finished with the Belfast Agreement on April 10, 1998. Since then, stability and peace have come to Northern Ireland. Republic of Ireland The 1937 Constitution re-established the state as the Republic of Ireland. In the 1980s, the Irish economy was in recession, and large numbers of people immigrated for employment reasons. Many young people immigrated to the United Kingdom, the United States of America, and Australia. However, economic reforms along with the membership of the now European Union created one of the world's highest economic growth rates. Ireland in the 1990s, so long considered a country of immigration, became a country of immigration. This period in Irish history was called the Celtic Tiger. That is all for today. Do you have any requests for our next video? Let us know in the comment section below. If you find this video interesting, we'd love you to support us for more life hacks and interesting facts.